Christian comedy is painful. I remember one time like eight years ago, I was in the car listening to a comedy channel on Sirius Radio and this guy came up. I don't remember his name. I don't remember anything he said before he said the thing I'm about to say. He was telling jokes, presumably, and then he just starts preaching. And not in a sarcastic, impressionistic comedy kind of way. I mean like it was his mission to go on stage and spread the word of God. I remember him saying, And that's what's so great about my God. He loves me and cares for me. I know my God will always be there for me. He kept calling it my God, which I guess is respectful to people who don't view him as their God. But then again, you have a guy on a national radio station meant for comedy using that time to praise the Lord in everyone's face. So I'm not really buying the whole you do you mentality. There. The name of the channel, by the way, was Raw Dog Comedy. Some of you may have listened to it. So not only is he ruining everyone's good time by preaching, he's doing it on a predominantly dirty comedy channel. You might as well have interrupted a Satanist convention to hand out Good Shepherd church donation baskets, the way you brought God to a party he was definitely not invited to. I remember the crowd during that performance being completely silent, which I thought was apt. I mean, you can't really listen to a guy being like, the Lord is my shepherd and he can heal you in places you didn't even know you were hurting and then just go, boo, fuck Jesus. It would be hilarious, but people don't do that. Oh, real quick off topic, that reminds me. When I was in high school, I would do the talent show every year. In my junior year, one of the acts was a girl who went to the school who would be singing a song with her little three-year-old sister. Just some nameless ballad typical of that kind of arrangement. The kid was okay. I mean, you lower your expectations vastly when it comes to little children, and she was just okay even taking into account those lowered expectations. So I had heard them practice before because we'd have a rehearsal night the night before the actual show. So during the show, I was sitting in the crowd with one of my friends who had also signed up, and it became their turn. The girl and her sister went up and started singing, and it was a downer. Like, you have to keep in mind that this is a high school talent show, where people are impressed by glow sticks and amateur rap exclusively. We're all sitting through it patiently, but we're not enjoying ourselves. So the two girls are exchanging solo lines at one point, and during the three-year-old's verse, my friend quietly, so only people in the crowd that are kind of nearby can hear, just yells, GET OFF THE STAGE! And thank God the lights are dimmed, so nobody can tell that I'm the one laughing hysterically with no volume control. The little girl hears me laughing and stumbles a little bit, which makes me laugh even more. I'm trying to keep it inside, but I feel like I'm having six heart attacks. The three-year-old looks in my general direction, stops singing, and her arm that's holding the microphone just kind of falls limply at her side. Her sister eventually gets her to keep going, but I mean the damage is done, right? That kid will never be a performer again. Her brain is too young. That shit gets imprinted. It's sad and funny at the same time. Anyway, back to Christian comedy. There's a few examples of Christian comedy on Netflix. It's a series of stand-up sets called Thou Shalt Laugh, Thou Shalt Laugh Too, and so on. I've seen two of them, and the only reason I made it that far was because I had a friend to be uncomfortable with. Sanctioned Christian comedy, like the kind where the audience knows that that's what they're dealing with and still buys tickets for some reason, is really jarring to watch if you're a fan of jokes that are funny. Because the audience is full of people who would pay to see Christian comedy, which is just the most shameless group of individuals I can imagine. They laugh like they'll go to hell if they don't, which is funny until you think about the fact that a lot of them probably actually think they'll go to hell if they don't. When I see young people part of that crowd, like the camera points to some teenage girls that are genuinely having a good time, I feel so bad for how crazily sheltered their existence has been conditioned to be. They're wearing shin-length dresses with, like, protective smocks over them, just to really guard their assets from the x-ray vision of the devil. You know they go home after the show's over and knit decorative pillows and quilts until it's time to churn butter. Sometimes Christian comics will try to pull off a mean joke, and they can't. It's really disconcerting to see. Like the woman who plays Ray's wife in Everybody Loves Raymond, Deborah, I don't know her real name, I did but I forgot, is the host of one of the shows. I didn't know she was a comedian, and after hearing her tell some jokes, I'm still not sure. But the way she introduces the next comic actually physically hurt me, because no, Deborah, you're not allowed to be like that at a Christian comedy showcase. She goes, the next comic coming to the stage is Michael Jr., and the crowd claps or whatever, and she continues, We actually have a lot of things in common. We both come from the same state, Pennsylvania. I think it was Pennsylvania. We both enjoy sushi. We both star in Emmy-winning sitcoms. Oh, wait, that's just me. Now that already is far enough, because did you forget where you are? Now everyone here thinks you're a bitch. But then she continues, I guess God had different plans for him. Oh, now it's God's fault he's not successful. That's fucking low.
But also the actual problem here is, you're not friends with Michael Jr. I know you aren't. You met him backstage, engaged in small talk for two minutes where you learned that he's from Pennsylvania and likes sushi, and then started the show. If this was a roast and you weren't so condescending in your delivery, it would have been fine. But a woman so Christian that she has to host Christian-only comedy shows cannot pull off dragging other people down for a laugh. Especially people she just met that she now chose to flaunt her success in front of. She might as well have been backstage like, Hi, what's your name? Michael Jr.? And how many Emmy wins does your TV show have? None? And you don't have a TV show? Well, shoot, I guess God works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? I'm gonna sip wine out of a gold chalice. The hypocrisy laid bare. Christian comedians share a lot of similarities with a fair amount of ethnic comedians. They rely on their own novelty to sell their material so they don't work as hard crafting actual humor, instead assuming enough will come from the very idea of whatever they're talking about. Christian comics are also very careful to the point where it's distracting. If they talk about feeling any negative emotions towards anything whatsoever, which is like 80% of what comedy is, they'll overzealously backpedal and remind the crowd of their faith. They'll be like, you know, I just really hate this popular music these days, and I know I shouldn't hate. I know hate isn't God's way. I'm a Christian. We're all Christians. And I know God has a plan for popular music, or he wouldn't allow it to exist. It's like before you can finish a one-sentence joke, you need a paragraph of disclaimers to discourage dissent. And that's a tiresome pattern. Some Christian comics seem to think that characters are still funny. And I'm not talking about like a Zach Galifianakis or TJ Miller sort of like, I'm going to introduce this character with specific traits, say one sentence as them, and then move on, which can still be funny. I mean like coming on stage as a character and doing the entire set as it. One guy was introduced as the village idiot. And I curled up into a ball on my couch and prayed for it to go away. He talked stupid, dressed idiotic, and basically mined pretending to be dumb for laughs for 10 minutes. And he was getting them. Somehow, people were laughing at this. He had one joke that was actually above average that made me laugh, and I wished it wasn't wasted on such a shitty circumstance, because that one good joke is now going to be permanently squandered amidst an awful black hole of terrible concepts and hacky observations. This would be the only scenario I can think of where it's acceptable to steal a joke from someone else, for the purpose of saving it from a lifetime of mediocrity. They closed the show I watched with a ventriloquist. Let's be clear. Jeff Dunham made ventriloquism funny and relevant for two comedy specials, Arguing With Myself and Spark of Insanity. That time is over. Jeff Dunham has turned his characters into catchphrase-spewing pandering machines, and no other ventriloquist has come even close to the level of funny that his first two specials were. Controlled Chaos wasn't awful, but it wasn't good. None of Jeff's holiday specials have been worth a damn, and All Over the Map features not a single laugh-worthy joke amidst all the manufactured controversy of performing certain stereotype puppets in certain countries. Ventriloquism is dead and has been for eight years. Lots of people hate Jeff Dunham, which is unwarranted. I mean, you can't say he's a bad comedian. In fact, he's a good comedian who just ran out of material before he ran out of fame. I doubt he could quit even if he wanted to, the way his puppets have established themselves as marketing giants across the globe. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.